So I'm going to give you a quick run through of Gothic literature in just five minutes. Um, assessment objective four is all to do with a genre and um, and so it's important that at least uh, at some point in your coursework essay that you kind of show a bit of an understanding of uh, the genre that Mary Shelley and that Bram Stoker were writing in and that, and that tradition. Um, how did it start? Well, it started with a novel called The Castle of Otranto uh, by Walpole in 1764 and has been popular ever since. And uh, the films that we uh, now go and see today, all these horror films, are all kind of stem from um, from this from this first um, this first Gothic novel. Um, some famous Gothic novels of the past. Um, we've got um, obviously Frankenstein's um, Mary Shelley, written um, by a nineteen-year-old Mary Shelley. Uh, it kind of stemmed from this competition that she had with a bunch of other people about who could write the scariest um, sort of ghost story. And um, and obviously uh, she came up with a corker with, with Frankenstein, um, Wuthering Heights, the Bronte sisters. Um, they're fairly uh, key novels, um, Jane Eyre as well, elements of Gothic in there. Our Oscar Wilde here, um, is one and only novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. It's absolutely brilliant and uh, psychologically really, really interesting. And some of you may have studied um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for GCSE. That's obviously a classic Gothic. Northanger Abbey is Jane Austen's Mickey take of, um, uh, of Gothic, the Gothic tradition, which uh, many saw as, um, although it was very popular, as maybe just a tiny bit trashy as well. And then we've got Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, uh, so, um, which many of you are, are, will be looking at for, for your coursework. Um, and um, you might recognise those Twilight novels that you may have read um, a few years ago. Um, that's obviously a direct descendant from uh, The Castle of Otranto and um, a typical modern Gothic narrative. We've got some kind of great writing by Margaret Atwood. Um, very sophisticated from a feminist angle, sort of rewriting the Gothic, and then Stephen King, uh, this very very famous Gothic um, writer in uh, you know twentieth um, century, the end of the twentieth century. Um, but you'll know loads. You will already be familiar and understand instinctively what is involved in a in a Gothic narrative, and you'll recognise some of these features, I'm sure. Um, the setting is always in, in some kind of isolation. That's, that isolation is what unites all of the settings in these Gothic novels. There's always somewhere, whether it's a kind of like a secluded warehouse in a modern day uh, Gothic fiction, or whether it's an isolated castle in Transylvania, um, there's always some kind of threat about uh, being vulnerable in this isolated setting. Uh, there's always an atmosphere of mystery and suspense. Obviously, that's key to the Gothic. Quite often features omens, curses, visions, nightmares, and so on. Um, and all kind of like the unexplained as well. Anything that's sort of unexplained. They were really interested in, in psychology, uh, Gothic writers. Um, supernatural beings, um, of course, monsters and vampires and ghosts. We've got um, Mary Shelley's The Creature who turns out to be perhaps be even more human than his um, creator, uh, Dr. Frankenstein. Um, and uh, obviously we've got, in Bram Stoker's Dracula, we've got the vampire as well. Um, and um, yes, as I said before, there's always something, there's this interest in the unexplained, those things that we just don't understand um, and uh, and and can't quite figure out. It's all very intriguing and mysterious. Um, lots of kind of you know passionate uh, dialogue um, and sort of heightened emotions um, uh, because the plot sort of centres around um, female characters that are under threat and these sort of villainous male tyrannical male characters. Um, actually, often the female has to make a choice between a good man. And um, an evil man, uh, or that the, the good man comes to rescue um, the female 
from uh, the threat of this sort of villainous uh, male figure. Um, and um, uh, to go back to the sort of hyperbolic, lang um, hyperbolic language as well that, um, uh, that normally accompanies um, Gothic literature. Um, and um, they're very, as I said before, they're very interested in psychology um, and, uh, you know, often there were kind of alter egos. You had a kind of a split personalities or alter egos. Um, often um, that manifested itself in two different versions of, uh, of a human being. You know, you might have the good male and the, the, the bad, the, you know, the, 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 the bad dark man and the sort of, you know, often the, um, the good blonde man. Um, very, very conventional. So, and these are the kind of like, this is the, the formula that many Gothic writers um, stuck to. Obviously, I'm massively dumbing it down for you here. Um, but um, if you ever get the chance to go and do a degree in English literature, oh, do make sure that you choose a course that allows you to study Gothic literature because it's absolutely fascinating.